the, the propaganda booklet, Davik. Okay, let's talk about this for a second. The idea, it says something, though, about ISIS, I guess, that, that they want to conquer Rome, defeat Christianity, and break the cross, right? But Rome's really uh, targeted for them, and I'm thinking, like, <laughs> how... <laughs> How would that ever happen, right? I mean, it, it, it's it's so it's so ridiculous, but it really gives an idea as to what ISIS thinks that they're fighting, and what yeah. ISIS says that they're fighting, and and what the people they're trying to recruit, what they're convinced of that we're fighting, right? It, or that they're fighting, that they say, well, uh, we're fighting Christianity, that that's what this is, um, and I think that as Americans, we often don't like to put ourselves in in the shoes of another person. We have a, a we we don't mind doing it with people as long as they're not too far out of our Overton window or not too far out of our geographic locale. But the moment th that you start doing that to people in other countries, it's like yeah, especially bad guys. You know, you don't you don't want to put yourselves in the in the shoes of a bad guy uh, and try to get where they're coming from and why they're why they're saying and doing the things that they're doing. But I, I think that it, it's awfully telling that to them that they use this uh, that they use. Uh, Rome, Christianity, and breaking the cross. Whereas, you know, let's say Al Qaeda in the, in the early days, at least Al Qaeda uh, was more interested in talking about a, a lot of things to do with uh, the Kyoto Agreement, right? Mm -hmm. And and how uh, climate impacted Afghanistan and other regions, and the fact that we were in certain places in their holy cities, or that we uh, had that we were manipulating and being manipulated by. Uh, the Saudi royals and stuff like that, that that was their pitch right back then. And the pitch now is this, which says something, I think, about the people they're trying to pitch it to and the cultural conditions and the mental mindset of people who are, are in, in the Middle East and in, in, in countries that we are bombarding and what they perceive this entire thing to be. Yes. Well, and, yeah, it's playing to the group. They know that there's a group of people that, well, it's, I don't want to be too stereotypical here in saying it, but it's not like there's a massive amount of higher education flooding through the Middle East right now in big systems. There, I'm not saying there are educated people there, but it, it shows a rudimentary level of ignorance that they think the Vatican is the source of Christianity. Kind of like capture the flag. Like, oh, if we get that and put the flag up, then everyone will just go home and call it quits. <laughs> like, it's just an irrational way of looking at the situation. And it's looking at it, it it's like a 2,000-year-old argument, so it seems like a 2,000-year-old way of solving it by going after something that was relevant 2,000 years ago. Or, And I know the Vatican was relevant earlier than that, but to say that the Vatican is somehow a, a pillar of Christianity that Christianity couldn't exist without, I, I disagree with that completely. It's kind of frustrating for me to feel like I... That, that my emotions and that my my thoughts and that my life is kind of caught up in this this whole thing and, and that it's it's very much a problem between two people having a pissing contest as to whose magic man is real yeah and and that that because of their seriousness and because of the amount of power they happen to have and the amount of danger that they can uh, the, the havoc that they can uh, put on humanity that we have to take this very seriously. Um, and that we're and and that we're left in a place where, on the one hand, you don't want to see anybody persecuted. On the other hand, you got ma magicians persecuting magicians over magical thinking, and that this yeah. is ultimately what what we're talking about. And it's really frustrating to me. There's there's part of me, and I know this is really crass, but there's part of me that just wants to simply say, "Listen, you get what you got. You if you want to jump in that war that, that didn't start yesterday, it's extremely old." And you want to get involved in this this war of the gods, uh, which God is real. Um, you're going to find yourself in this position, and no amount of military might has ever taken care of it in the past. No amount of military might is going to take care of it today, and we're all the worse off for it. And it 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 just it drives me nuts. Yeah, no, that's ex that's exactly right. What what are we going to do? How how do you how do you finish? an argument with two monotheistic cultures. Obviously, there's a reason they're fighting each other, because they both are laying claim to the same thing, both with the same amount of evidence. Zero evidence. But right. that's what they're doing. They, I mean, they're literally fighting each other over these monothe monotheistic tenets that they both have, 
and they want to say that my God is mine, your God is wrong, and I'm going to kill you for it. That, is, like you said, ancient argument. And you can't bomb ideas. Bullets don't kill ideas. But discourse does. And right. I think there's a way of logically fighting these things out of our system. And to arm up and re-engage is not the way to solve it. It just seems like a, it seems like energies that could be used doing much uh, more productive things uh, for society. Right. You know, I just... The, the entire debate, this entire thing, uh, is premised on the idea, really, down to its root, in so many ways, on, on the idea that, that our God's better than yours. And I, I can't help but to think, you know, you hear in, in, in America, you hear a lot of these people get on there, the more religious types, conservative religionists. Um, they'll, they'll get on TV and they'll talk about just nuking them sand niggers, right? Just, just yeah. nuke, nuke the towel heads. And they... They say this kind of nonsense, these offensive things, um, and yet their 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 uh, undergarments get all in a bunch when when they hear somebody from a, a Muslim, another monotheist, an absolutist, a, a bird of a feather cut from the same cloth, saying something similar about nuking the Jews. Yeah, yeah. Just get rid of them. Just nuke those bastards. Yeah, that's and, the way to they, solve it. Right. That's the way to solve it, and it seems like that's kind of where they're all coming from. <laughs> you know, yeah. Israel's, Israel's upset because we're not more militarily involved. We need to wipe these people out. Uh, people in the United States, we need to wipe these people out. People over uh, in Iraq and in Syria, the, the uh, jihadists, they wipe out the Jews, wipe out America, wipe out the Vatican. And this is their world. This is the way that their mind works. And it's not like it's a small group of them. These are people who are making gobs of money and have huge amounts of influence and power uh, politically and culturally that believe these things and that say these things and talk about these things uh, and not just here but in Israel and and places uh, in the Middle East and you just you shake your head and you say is this really all that you have is this the answer that that uh, yeah. get rid of them all and then get mad when the other group says well we should nuke you well no we should nuke you and, and I can't well, believe you would talk about nuking nuke those people it is a it's a giant dick measuring contest it is it is it's a it is it's a it's a my gun's bigger than your gun is bigger than your gun is bigger than your gun is bigger than your gun it, it's very rudimentary it's very barbaric it's very simple and it's a and it's, it's a logical form of thinking that we need to just abandon. Right. So okay, moving on. Ebola.